What's good everybody, BBK Dragoon here with my first review of Destiny 2. It is the Nightshade Pulse Rifle, an absolutely phenomenal PvP weapon. A lot of you probably remember this weapon from the beta, the console beta. It was a beast back then, it's seen a little bit of tuning, it's not quite as strong, but it's still a monstrous PvP weapon that's very easy to acquire. You can get this weapon from Zavala, I've specifically tried not to use footage of Zavala in case you haven't completed the campaign yet. But when you complete a certain number of strikes, Zavala will offer you one of three weapon rewards, and one of them is the Nightshade Pulse Rifle. If you've already accepted the reward, don't worry, there is a chance for the Nightshade to drop from your rank ups with Zavala by doing strikes. So what makes up the Nightshade? First of all, you have the Red Dot Micro, increases range, increases handling speed. This is what I use throughout the review, it's my preferred scope, however the Red Dot 2 MOA for PvP is also exceptional, slightly increases the range and increases the handling speed. I do not recommend using Rifle Scope ST in anything other than PvE, it increases the range but it really decreases the handling speed and it's just sort of a bulky scope not necessary for this type of weapon. In the first perk tree we have the option of Tactical Mag. slightly increases stability, increases your reload speed, and increases the magazine size. This is a very solid option for aggressive players who plan to use this weapon up close. This will increase the magazine to 33 in comparison with the base 30. Your second option in this tree is the armor piercing rounds, where your rounds cause extra damage to combatant shields and over penetrate targets, but mainly it slightly increases the range. A phenomenal option if you're going to be using this as a more support PvP player and locking down sight lines for your teammates. The best perk of this weapon is Kill Clip. Reloading after a kill grants increased damage. So when you take down an opponent and you reload the weapon, the moment you finish that reload, your weapon will glow, you'll hear a noise, and an on-screen indicator will show that Kill Clip is activated. It lasts for about four seconds, maybe five, the way I timed it, it seems a little bit closer to four, and it applies a damage buff to your weapon. So normally, without this buff active, the weapon deals 20 precision damage and 14 body damage. That lends itself to a four burst kill, so long as you're landing a decent amount of precision shots. If you're new to weapon reviews for Destiny, precision damage refers to the damage we do when we're connecting to the head hitbox, and body damage is just everywhere except that. So the white numbers are body damage, and the precision numbers are the yellow numbers when you're connecting headshots. It's a very important part of Destiny. However, when Kill Clip is activated, you then deal 26 precision damage and 18 body damage. It then becomes a 3 burst kill. And at how fast this weapon already operates, being a mid-impact, mid-rate of fire pulse rifle, that is a very, very fast takedown. So again, it's a four burst kill, as long as you're landing some precision shots in your string, normally, and with kill clip activated, it goes up to a three burst, and it becomes much easier to throw more damage down range. This weapon, the intrinsic perk, is called Lightweight Frame. Superb handling, you move faster with this weapon equipped, just makes for a very strong strafing weapon. How best should this weapon be used then? At mid and long ranges, this is the bread and butter of the Nightshade. Any of you who used this during the console beta, understand that up close, submachine guns and auto rifles will definitely do better than this weapon. And it's a little bit uncomfortable to use up close and personal. But at ranges like these, the mid and longer ranges, it is a monster of a weapon, and you want to be putting as much damage down lane as possible to help your teammates. This becomes such a great support weapon when you're locking down sight lines, especially in the control game type, because if you score a kill, you get the reload, you're immediately throwing even more damage down range, and most players aren't aware of the kill clip buff being activated. You can't really hear it or see it when you're an opponent, so if you walk into a lane of somebody who's accurately shooting kill clip buff Nightshade, you can drop them super, super duper fast. When you're in gunfights, since you have the increased agility that lightweight frame of affords you, keep moving, move back and forth, strafe. This is just a great weapon all around, and at mid-ranges, you can clearly take out hand cannon players. The weaknesses of the gun happen in its recoil. New players may find this a tough weapon to actually balance out. For newer players too, I would suggest probably using the tactical mag perk instead of the armor piercing round perk. Purely because, like I said, this weapon kicks pretty hard and if you're not used to managing recoil just yet, uh, tactical mag is going to benefit you. Now damage fall off is something I said I will explain, but first of all, I want to show off the brand new Shax lines because they're incredible, so for 10 kills, Shax is going to drop it for us. Numbers, Excellent. 
Who says warlocks are better with books than with guns? Okay. It was me. But I was lying. Rage is an excellent motivator. Now, damage falloff is something that happens to all weapons in Destiny, and it's directly tied to the range stat. When you reach the edge of the, like, range limit for that weapon, you're going to see decreased damage. So at really long distances, you may notice you're doing a lot less damage. That's why a lot of times experienced Destiny players try and push that range stat as far as we can, so we can make the weapon as effective as possible at pretty much all ranges. That's why some players may want to use armor-piercing rounds. In a lot of these clips, you're seeing an armor-piercing round shot, so you saw my damage decrease to 18 there for precision, instead of 20 because I was a little bit further away. That's a, a difference of two damage per shot, but when we're talking about each burst, that can affect your kill times um, pretty significantly, and especially on larger maps, it's just something to be aware of. This weapon kicks up and to the left and up and to the right sometimes, so it's kind of random which way it's going to kick, and I'd rather, you know, just encourage you as a player to try and control the vertical recoil, and at first probably not even worry about trying to handle the left and right, because that on a controller can be kind of challenging. Now, when it comes to PvE, it's fairly hard for me to give uh, damage numbers like I did in Destiny 1 because of the way the new enemy scaling actually works. What I can say is that at 220 light when I was recording this review, uh, tier 1 enemies in PvE were taking 130 precision damage and 44 body damage. Kill clip also is an effect for PvE, so you will see um, 173 precision damage and 58 body damage when it's active for tier 1. And then for tier 3 enemies, I saw 57 precision damage and 38 body damage. But again, I'm not really sure how to convey PvE damages based upon the new enemy scaling and the fact that I have not hit max light just yet. How is it in PvE? It's fine. It's just a pulse rifle. It does decent job. I mean, it's, it'll get work done for you, but it doesn't really have any perks that are that beneficial for PvE itself. This is definitely a weapon geared for PvP. So with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Go out there, grab yourself one of these nightshades, be paying close attention as you're completing your first sets of strikes as Zavala begins offering you rewards. I don't want you to miss the opportunity to pick this up and have to wait then to hope to get it in one of your rank up packages with Zavala. So the nightshade pulse rifle, exceptional in PvP. It's something every player is gonna wanna have in their kit. This is basically gonna become one of the bread and butter pulse rifles of the early PvP meta. And unless things change, I can see this being a strong weapon contender until whenever the next patches for weapon balancing. If you enjoyed this review, please let me know with a like. If you have recommendations or ideas for future videos you'd like to see, please let me know down in the comments section below. I'll be back soon with more videos and tips, so subscribe if you're interested in more Destiny 2 content. Thanks and have a great day.